So as I'm sure all of you know, the other day I built an absolutely massive iron farm. This thing is in my industrial district and it requires 30 villagers. And I have... Yeah, I don't, I don't have any villagers in the industrial district. I don't have any villager breeders in the industrial district. And I currently have no way to get the villagers from this place here, which I do have villagers, over to the industrial district. So to start off today's Hermitcraft episode, we're going to try our best to suss all of that out. So I guess stage one, once I've cleared out all of the ones that are currently in the water, is to get some form of area where I can stop them in their minecart I can pop them out of their minecart and then I can pop them into a boat because boats are by far the easiest way to transport villagers. I know that seems strange, but that's the best way to do it. Stage two is to transport them by boat through the water, which actually makes life really easy, into this nether portal over here. So I guess we're going to need a little piston pusher that will allow us to bring them up there. The next stage is to make this place safe for our villager and make sure that he can't escape anywhere. <laughs> Which means I'm going to have to make this place even uglier by doing a really quick patch up job. At some point, I will fix this place up, okay? Then once we're on the other side of the nether portal, we need to make sure that everything is safe. The villager isn't going to run off anywhere. Then we need to make some way to get our villager to go up there. Might just be the weirdest sound my throat has ever made. I don't know what that was. How high do you go when you get launched by a slime block? Almost. This is definitely precarious. <laughs> But I've decided we're going to stick with that system. You can see we've got some slime blocks down there and I also have some extra pistons to push us up the extra bit of way that we need to go. Now I need to snake my way over to that ice path there and then that is basically the home straight. All right, now we've made it here. Now we need to work out how we're going to transport them from the nether portal up and over to my iron farm, which is all the way over there. And also a, a, a quite a different height to the rest of the stuff that we've got going on. But that, of course, has been solved by this slime block right here, so now we just travel across on a very precarious and one block wide diorite bridge. I'm sure Iskal would love it. So that is everything. Now it is time to actually start transporting our villagers and moving them over. I've got 30 of them to gather up and a husk. So I thought it would be fun to do this in the form of a live stream. It's been ages since I've done one. I'm very, very out of practice. But let's see how well this goes. And after just over three hours of live streaming, we've got ourselves an actual working iron farm. Look at this. We've got our husk. We've got our villagers in place. We've got three here, three here, and... Yeah. Uh, so, it turns out that getting these guys over to this area here... It's a bit of a challenge. It is. It is a bit of a challenge. Okay, we tried. We sort of, we tried a few different methods. We've got we've got a minecart rail. I added all of that in. We've got a minecart rail going through the Nether. But still, I mean, we had a lot of cases of villagers dying and things just going wrong. You know, villagers going through Nether portals. Then you have to wait for the cooldown timer, which is like four minutes long. I calculated that if it takes 10 minutes to do every single villager, that's 300 minutes, that's 5 hours. I thought we'd be able to nail it, but it definitely takes more than 10 minutes per villager. And it's looking like it will be about 20 hours to get all of the villagers over into all of their modules. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave those guys in place. They can stay there. I'm then going to go and grab a bunch more villagers, and we're going to build up another villager breeder over in the industrial district. It will be somewhere over... I mean, it needs to be decently far away from these guys, so I would say probably over here, and then we'll be able to transport them easily. Now, the villager breeder design that we're going to be using is going to be this one. It's just going to be a lot less pretty than this. We're not going to have any of the decoration around it, but all we should need to do is get ourselves a villager into this little farming zone here, and then we need to construct this little bed system. I actually really can't remember how this thing works. You know, so we've got the beds... And I think we've got... We don't have any workbenches. They just... They literally chill out on there. I guess on a fence post. Okay, that's... That's... that. Why did I not build this? <laughs> why didn't I build this in the industrial district originally? How did I think this... Building that would be more challenging than getting 30 villagers over through the nether, through... through lava... Across about 300... I just, just... I don't know. I worry about myself sometimes. I really do. Regardless of that, progress is coming along pretty nicely. So we are just in the process 
of placing in all of the blocks around here. I can't remember where the water needs to go because obviously the water needs to go in certain locations to actually keep all of the crops hydrated. Mm, that seems maybe like it could be correct. I really should have taken some more screenshots. I'm kind of building this from memory right now. Oh, and if you see a bunch of names in the chat that you don't really recognize, that is because the Love Tropics live stream is currently going on and there's a few extra people on the server. Which means that I've totally lost track of time because that means I've only got about five, maybe six hours at a push of recording time left before I have to edit and upload this video tonight. I've been too busy playing Minecraft Earth up in London. I would suggest you check out my Twitter and Instagram to see more of that. Plus, this glorious image of Korean's face. <laughs> Spectacular. I genuinely think I could look at that image all day long. Anyway, we have got we have got some beds That is the final one our villagers chill out in that area there that fence post there is where they stand So that the babies can drop around it and everything else Is all in everything's hydrated farmland done. We've got a little trap door right here So our villager can't actually get into this space, but you can still throw carrots through I think, I think this is it. Well, <laughs> apart from, we need an area to actually catch the baby villagers because right now, <laughs> that would not be a good, would not be a good situation. What a horrible birth. I'm curious though, before we actually move our villagers over, I want to see if this thing is actually producing iron golems. Ah, oh, there's, see, there's no iron. Here, 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 here. Oh my goodness. That m that was so ridiculously close. But yeah, no iron. Why exactly is that? Oh, there's an iron golem there. Oh, an iron golem has spawned on the tracks. And then I guess these guys can detect that, obviously, so that they no longer need an iron golem. That makes a lot of sense. I was wondering why this, was, this wasn't working. I was really starting to panic. Weirdly, even though the golem is gone, it's still not quite working properly. So I have to look into that in a second. For now, I just want to move some villagers. So we only have to get three villagers over into the villager breeder for this thing to start working. But it does mean that I'm going to have to use use the boat to minecart to minecart method. Oh, actually, now it's boat to minecart to boat. Come on, dude. In you go. It is... Oh, it is difficult. I actually transported this guy by boat over there because it seems just a little... No, 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 no. Oh, good. Wow. What a villager. I'm a fan of this guy. <laughs> because I genuinely thought we were going to lose him. But he, he came to his senses and he was like, nah, I'm not going out there. Uh, Mumbo will be upset. The end is in sight. And I'm going to try my best not to trample all the crops. Or do anything that causes me to fall through the floor. And this guy seems to be fine as well. Everything has gone great. As long as he didn't escape through that hole that I had left. Cool. Okay, so we've got we've got a farmer. We've got him in place. He might actually have some carrots in his inventory, so I'll be I'll be curious to see if he actually starts planting them. By the looks of things, he's not going to. Is he okay? Just jumping around on there. All right, I'll leave him to it. All right, so that's that. Now the two villagers up at the front. <laughs> a ghast has just come in and blown up my redstone. I think that might be the. F <laughs> that might just be the first time that's ever happened. Oh, I've got to be so careful. That's actually quite frustrating because I have to go and get my redstone shulker box so that I can replace. <laughs> After doing a little bit of patch up work, this guy is now in his little area. He, I feel almost bad for him because this is his life now. This is where you're going to be staying. But the good news is you are going to get plenty of carrots. So it's not all bad. And now on to the last one. Get in. No, no, that was not a boat. I thought that was a boat. That's the boat. There we go. Absolutely nailed it. Okay, so this guy is chilling in bed. Villagers look really weird from this angle. Why is his nose lifted up like that? Or is it not? No, no, no. They've just got big noses. Okay, so we've got, we've got that villager there. We've got that villager there who doesn't seem to want to sleep yet. And then we've got that villager there. Uh, all we have to do now is get a bunch of carrots, which I don't actually have any carrots. So we're going to have to create like a bone meal carrot farm, I guess. And further good news, our iron farm also seems to be working too. So it looks like they actually had to sleep in all their beds and things like that. 
And now this thing is actually working and producing iron. In fact, we need to set up some form of storage down there because we're actually probably going to get a decent amount from the amount of time that we're going to spend moving the villagers. Where where did all these come from? Seriously, like where, where did they come from? Now I must admit, although it took a little bit longer than I expected, this thing is now in place and now this should start funneling out villagers. I think it does on average about four villagers per hour. So, I mean, we're going to have to do some AFKing here and we'll get like a decent batch of them and then we'll be able to start transporting them into our iron farm. But I did see some love hearts earlier on from these villagers, so I think that means it's working. But I've got to hook it up into this minecart rail over here. And I apologize for the fact that all of those clips had villagers humming in the background. Uh, my camera account was over by my other villager breeder just so I could make sure everything was correct. I definitely think when we start a Hermitcraft season seven, the first thing that I'm going to do is build a sorting system that actually sorts every single stackable item in Minecraft because having this miscellaneous section is just, it's so tough. We've got a child. He's just, he's just run under there. I'm kind of concerned for him now. I hope nothing's happened to him. <laughs> there he is. Um, well, he's stuck there forever. To be honest, there's nothing that I can do about about that. Because there's bedrock on all sides. There's literally nothing I can... He, he is stuck. <laughs> but I guess at least we know it's working. Alright, at least we know it's working. Oh my goodness! No! 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 Please no! Please no! We got, we got a baby villager. A baby villager. Oh my goodness, I, I survived it. What? Oh my. We got a baby villager. I looked up and was like, oh, we got a baby villager. How cool is that? I let go of shift as I was placing in those minecart rails and I fell into that lava. <laughs> that is the closest I've ever come to dying in Minecraft. Oh my word. I'm genuinely shaken up. I'm, I really am. I'm also a little bit embarrassed about the fact that I did not notice this thing of water here, which... Hmm. That's curious. It is amazing, isn't it? How much... How much of a difference, like, demise being a thing and there actually being consequence to your death. I mean, I would have lost all my items. That would have been really frustrating. I would have been quite upset. But... The added fear of actually dying and then having that grey skin and being being one of the dead ones. Um, yeah, me, it gets the adrenaline pumping, that's for sure. Anyway, my near-death experience aside, uh, Villager Breeder is all in place, all connected up. Everything is now good to go. So this, this little iron farm right here can now start actually being fully loaded in. So we will go from having just one module over to having five modules. Five modules, eventually. Oh gosh, I just witnessed something. How did I, I spotted that happening. I spotted that happening. That is the most hilarious thing ever. <laughs> I was just watching these guys. So I was just watching them, okay? And I was just seeing what the minecart and everything like that is doing. <laughs> An iron golem spawned, I'm guessing, here or here, and just destroyed the husk. Just what? <laughs> what What on earth? I can't believe I wasn't recording. I was zoomed in. I was watching it happen from over there. Oh, my goodness. This might just be my most unlucky project. I mean, what are the chances of that happening? Seriously? <laughs> I thought we'd have an iron farm by the end of this video. So now I have to put get a husk back onto my to-do list. I thought we'd covered that. It was frustrating enough. I mean, I'm sure anyone who watched the live stream will know the ordeal that I went through to get that husk. Ah, oh, now we have to do it all again. Right, I'm gonna take a little bit of time out from that iron farm project for a little while. Uh, I'm currently on sapling duty, actually. I'm flying over to where the Love Tropics people are, and I'm providing them some spare saplings, because apparently they're running low. 
uh, and they need lots of them. Now the reason that they need all of those saplings is because of this situation here. People are going crazy donating and um, yeah, we, we, yeah, there's just loads of trees need to be planted and there's different types of trees for different types of donations. I've come in, I'm providing lots of oak, so I'm just running around placing in saplings essentially. Um, yeah, let's, let's try and populate this donator forest. Iskal is, I mean, this, this is just a, a, a crazy look for Iskal. I don't even know what to say. But regardless of that, I'm really glad to hear that the Love Tropic stream went down so incredibly well. That is fantastic news. Anyway, back over at the base now, I need to pick up a whole bunch of ice and a whole bunch of glass because we need to make some item transportation systems and also do a few upgrades and also not dive from that guy. He was brutal. This is always a little bit precarious. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. So we need to run an item stream probably into that tube, to be honest with you. And I guess the easiest way to do it would be go right the way to the end, left, drop them in there. And then, yeah, they'll be filtered through into the system. And then... Oh, yeah, we're actually going to need to make some modifications. Mm. Okay. Uh, hmm. This might actually need its own little storage system. Just because we've got miscellaneous items at the end, and there's no sorters there. Okay, for now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to filter it into the miscellaneous item section. We can try and work out how big that storage system needs to be uh, later on, because a 4,800 iron per hour it probably is actually going to need to be quite big. Um, okay, what else do we need? Oh yeah, loads more ice, actually, so that I can actually place in the water. Because at this stage in time, all of the actual framework is in place, and I have to say, it looks really, really cool. I mean, just look at this place. Look at how wicked that looks, funneling all the items in. I actually can't wait to get more builds inside this area here, because even though I never thought I'd see the day, we are actually filling up the industrial district with farms, which is really ridiculous. So now that that's all in place, it's time to replace the husk that we lost. I've got my villager head, I've got a few other bits that we can throw down. All I need is the potions of weakness which that is absolutely perfect. I'll actually throw some redstone in there so it lasts for a little bit longer. And then we can run off to the desert and hopefully get ourselves one. Whereabouts is the sun? Oh my goodness, this is perfect. First time ever it's actually getting dark when I need it to get dark. Funnily enough, I actually joked about that in the live stream when I was trying to get the husk. These phantoms are absolutely brutal. The problem is I really need to sleep through the night. But oh my goodness, have you seen how many mobs there are as well? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay, I'm gonna focus on this dude over here because he doesn't seem to be too surrounded. Is he gonna pick up the boat? We need we need ones that pick up things. Oh goodness. I have never hated Phantom so much. I'm actually saying this through gritted teeth because I'm i so, I'm I'm really angry. <laughs> and I voted for them. I just think they're the worst. I have managed to find a husk though can, that can pick things up. Look, he's holding an arrow. I've thrown that down. Yes! <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not necessary for him to be wearing the villager head. I just think it looks hilarious. That's the most important thing. All right, dude, you're coming with me. And after sleeping through the night so that everything's safe, I'm going to pop him in my boat. There we go. And I'm going to take him on a bit of a trip. Now, I'll get him in the water, and I'm quickly going to have to pop back to my base, because I, I, I crafted up Splash Potions of Weakness. Um, but yeah, I forgot the Splash. They're just... They're just potions. That's, that's not that much use, is it? Now, if you're wondering why I needed the Weakness Potions, it's because then the dude doesn't hit me anymore. I... I'll be honest, I, this is not something I was aware of. My chat during my live stream were just shouting that I should do it because I was constantly just getting damaged and hopping out the boat so I could recover. And that is it's actually really useful information. That's, that's really good. That's really good to know. Um, so thank you, chat. I still think you're wrong on most things. Okay, most things the chat is wrong, but on this, you did good. So with the help of that weakness potion, I managed to get him all the way over to my base and now I'm gradually carting him through the nether. <laughs> we look like an absolutely ridiculous team. It actually looks like he's operating the boat a little bit. <laughs> and then I'm just cruising up front, not really doing anything. I gotta say, these guys look absolutely adorable, all lined up in their beds. <laughs> There's something very, very sweet about it. They're like, right, 
<laughs> he's even looking around. He's like, guys, are you? We all in? We all snug? Right, okay. They're not going to be in a second because I'm about to bring a husk in, uh, which I don't think they're really going to like too much. Hopefully, that should just connect this husk straight into the system. Come on, minecart. Just, just go. Yes. Yes. Husk is on his way. Husk is on the way. Now we see what happens. Have I left any gaps? Is this guy just going to fall through into the lava? I, I certainly hope that isn't going to happen. I also need to make sure that there's no places where an iron golem can spawn where the husk is then going to get killed by it because that was bad luck on my part. Fantastic. Okay, this is all done. And let's see, is the iron going into place? Yes. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we've got 31 iron in there already. And that iron is being transported from all the way over there into this little storage system. That is spot on. So, I guess you know what time it is. I am going to go AFK at this thing and also AFK at this thing in the hope that I can get a whole bunch of villagers in this area here. I thought... <laughs> I thought they've been turned into zombies then, but that's good. No, it looks like the villager breeder is also working. This is... Everything has ended up going to plan, so I'm going to go AFK overnight. I really do hope that you enjoyed this Hermitcraft episode, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya! And I've got to say, this one's been a really, really fun one to record for me, because it's kind of been ups and downs. There's, there's been all sorts of struggles that I ran into, and also during recording it, obviously we did the live stream, which was my first one in ages, and it was actually quite fun kind of missed live stream. I, I wouldn't mind doing it more often whenever a project comes up like this with just a huge boring element to it.